Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me today in this video. We're going to discuss the latest constitutional crisis that is centering around the standoff between the feds and between the state of Texas. So this week, the Biden administration launched an emergency stay appeal to the Supreme Court. There's a lot of back and forth with this, but essentially the concertina wire that Texas had erected to secure its border, uh, particularly its border that is along areas that are not ports of entry. So the undefended border, relatively speaking. The Biden administration petitioned, by the way, taking our tax dollars to do so, to be able to go and cut concertina wire to just let people keep walking across. And so this is setting off a back and forth that really has been an ongoing issue with immigration, and that is the failure of the federal government to execute upon it is re its required duties, and actually its duties that it has constitutional purview to, to, to police and to act upon, um, it's derelict in its duties. And because it has become derelict in its duties, and it's not just allowing, but it's full-fledged facilitating the invasion of the United States using our tax dollars to, to flood in open up the gates to anybody who wants to come here to get on the welfare system to take from the united states tax dollar this standoff between the feds doing this and then sovereign states saying enough is enough we can't take care of our people and oh by the way there are criminal elements that are crossing through the borders there are public health threats that are crossing through the border and there's also infrastructure needs that come secondary to being flooded with between 6 to 13 million illegals that we cannot meet so what's happening now is the Biden administration is effectively saying that they're going to continue allowing this and they're going to get into locking horns, no pun intended, with the state of Texas on this. And over the past 24 hours, there have been 17 states, I believe at this point, there probably will be more by the time that this video airs, 17 states that have said, no, 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 we're with the state of Texas. If Texas decides to defend its borders, it has the constitutional purview to do so when the federal government has become derelict in its duties. No, by the way, the federal government in our United States Constitution, the federal government has very few, the powers of the federal government are supposed to be few and limited. And of its powers that the Constitution grants the federal government, securing the national border and protecting the states from invasion, that is very strongly worded language. It's shall defend the borders, right? Not may, not okay if you feel like it, but shall. That means you better freaking do it from a constitutional standpoint. And so I'll put links in the description box below to these key points of law that it's important for us to really be informed upon. And Governor Abbott this week released a statement wherein he enumerated essentially the, the legal precedent for Texas defying the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is, by the way, they are not the law of the land. I'll say that again. The Supreme Court is not the law of the land. They are not the final word of the land. The Constitution of the United States is the law of the land. So when the Supreme Court decides that it wants to flex and not go with what the Constitution says, then not only is the Supreme Court's decision null and void, but it would be unconstitutional for any state to enforce a law that was deemed, even though it was unconstitutional, constitutional. The Dred Scott case, there have been various different times throughout United States history where the Supreme Court has really screwed up big time. And especially if this thing continues to go the way that I think it will, uh, we're going to see an escalation of this. Obviously, this is happening in, in an election time, election season. And there are political points to be scored here. But I think we would be remiss to allow the fact that this is happening during an election cycle to obfuscate the point here. And the, the bigger point here is that the federal government is the greatest single pressing threat to the rights and securities of the citizenry of the United States. The federal government is facilitating the invasion and the violation of the rights of the citizenry of the United States. What they are doing on our southern border by spending taxpayer dollars to go down there and cut concertina wire to make the border more porous and then to take more federal tax dollars to support these invaders coming in, whether it's in grants for housing or in free health care initiatives, iPhone, whatever it is. That is no less of a travesty as it would be as if they funded the Japs bombing Pearl Harbor in World War II. They are facilitating 
the degradation of the sovereignty and the border integrity of the United States, and the burden of their dereliction of duty is falling squarely upon the states and upon citizens outside the border states. Why is that? Because we have to pay taxes. And all of this nonsense is happening, whether it's with immigration, for it taking these people in, and then having them each with, what is it, $3,000 of, of an allowance that they're given, plus an iPhone, and then they get subsidized housing. And then the state of California, they everybody there apparently gets health care for free now. So who pays for all this? Even people, people who aren't in border states pay for this. At a time when roughly 40% of Americans are priced out of basic housing, the Biden administration is saying, bring them on in. Oh, by the way, we can't, our people can't put a roof over, our, over their heads. Our veterans are homeless in the streets, living under bridges and in their cars. And we're bringing in all of the rest of the world. My friends who are legal immigrants of the United States are some of the most livid about it of anybody I know, because they didn't get to jump borders and come over here and have everything given to them and have their children grandfathered in and get free college and whatever it is for in perpetuity for everybody who would come after them. No, they had to pay attorney's fees. They had to show up for court. They had to take the citizenship exam. And instead, now it's not just Latin America that's coming in. This is a dangerous thing that people don't understand. We are being invaded full scale by fighting age men from all over the world, including from countries that have nursed for years Islamo-fascist ideologies. We are being invaded by countries uh, from people, essentially sending people over here who have no skills whatsoever, non-skilled labor. Uh, this is a very, very important thing when you consider that when you're bringing people over here and they have no effective means of employment, they don't speak the language, they're not being screened for diseases, they're certainly not being screened for ideology. What is going to happen with this non-native element? Do we think that they're somehow going to assimilate? Do we think that they're going to become good and productive citizens? I don't care what they've been coached to say at the border. They have been coached by the coyotes and by the Democrat party to say the right thing so that way they qualify for asylum. All they have to say is, I'm afraid of the cartel killing my family and I can't go back. If they give some type of credible, quasi semi credible asylum seeking you know, threat of violence, they get to just jump right on over. So in the meantime, while our economy is in shambles, who's going to pay for all this? We are. We are paying, and not because we want to. You and I are having our money stolen via coercive threat of incarceration or asset forfeiture and seizure from the United States federal government to pay for our own further enslavement. That is what the situation is. And Texas decided to stand up. So 17 states, as we've said, have aligned with Texas right now. The governors, at least Governor of Tennessee, Bill Lee, who I have many bones to pick with. At least he came out and said publicly that he supports Abbott on this. So check and see if your state is one of those states that has come into um, support, at least pledging support for the state of Texas. This is a powder keg that's about to kick off. And people forget oftentimes the last major domestic conflict that we had here in the United States, i.e. 1861 to 1865, the war between the states. This was not an issue primarily um, of slavery, despite what people would like to say. And I do not care what all the Ivy League, the poison Ivy League schools have to say about it. States' rights, state sovereignty, territorial boundaries, and the ability of the states to defend themselves from an invading federal government, a federal government that was squarely in opposition of their right to defend themselves. That is what kicked this off last time. And so we're looking at this again. The Tenth Amendment is a very important point to consider here, that those powers not specifically enumerated in the Constitution as belonging to the feds, belong to the states, or to the people. And if the federal government is derelict in the duties that it was entrusted to safeguard, it falls to the states and or the people to defend their life, their liberty, and their property. If the federal government is, is endangering our lives, is stealing our property, and is jeopardizing our liberty, it is null and void in its mandate to to serve the people. The government serves at the behest of the people and only by the consent of the governed. So if it's not doing that, what good is it? Putting another person in the White House is not going to fix this issue permanently. This issue is one that has spiraled since we had income tax and it's been growing like a cancerous legion the size of the federal government and the abuses of its powers. And until it's reined, reined in, either via a, con via a convention of states 
or by secession or by straight up defiance, like in the state of Texas, they're going to continue oppressing people. They will drive us into poverty. They have successfully done this with the fiat system, um, with inflation over the past few years, and they're going to continue to do it. They want us destroyed. The federal government and the Biden administration are treasonous thugs. They are complicit in the invasion of the United States, and they deserve to be opposed in whatever way the governors and the people deem necessary to safeguard their life, liberty, and property. Hope the video was helpful for y'all. If you enjoyed it today, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also stay with me and support me on Patreon, subscribe to our cryptocurrency, and PayPal. I got links below for you. In times like this, friends, we got to be prepared because in moments of breakdown in rule of law, domestic turmoil, you can be sure they don't want a fair and free election coming up for 2024. They definitely don't want that. I don't put it past the feds to try and push this thing towards all out full blown civil war in order to not have to give up their power structure. If that be the case, we need to be capable of pre prepare and prepared to defend ourselves, whether it is with beans, bolts, or band-aids. We need to be able to cover our bases. That is what I have endeavored to do um, as my service here on YouTube and making videos for over a decade for free to the public. If you'd like to train with me and learn more about how to safeguard your family's health in times of uncertainty, I've got two options for you. I've got a four-hour course and an over seven-hour course. The four-hour course that I offer is the Foundations of Medical Prep, and that's $129 for a higher price point. If you're looking to invest more in yourself and you have the time and you want to dedicate yourself towards being more prepared, I have the seven-hour herbal uh, preparedness course that I'm offering now. Those links are in the description box below. Guys, we got to be ready. Um, this thing's looking, looking dicey and it's probably not going to get any better until the Biden administration is reined in in their power, they are checked, and they are put in their place. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you all there. Bye.